If you're thinking about starting a short-term rental business, particularly Airbnbs, then this video is for you. Airbnb businesses have been super profitable these past few years with the average Airbnb host in North America making $41,026 last year. Now with this explosion in Airbnb, tons of competition entered the market with short-term rental listings skyrocketing to 1.38 million in September, which is a 23% year over year increase according to AirDNA. However, recent news has come up about how many Airbnb hosts are losing a ton, if not all of their bookings. According to news articles, this all started with a viral post from the user Texas runner DFW, who tweeted a picture of an Airbnb super host explaining their huge decrease in bookings over the last three to four months. Now, while that might seem like terrible news, if we take a look at Airbnb's shareholder letter for Q3 of 2022, we can see that they actually had their most profitable quarter ever despite geopolitical and macroeconomic headwinds. So with all of these conflicting perspectives, that leaves us with the important question of what's the truth about starring an Airbnb in 2023. Now to give you some background on the rise of Airbnb, during the pandemic, we saw tons of demand shift away from hotels to Airbnbs because they were much more affordable. With this demand, we've also seen a ton of new Airbnb hosts join the industry looking to make a profit. It does make sense because literally everyone is talking about how much money they're making from their Airbnb. Plus the fact that you can get to Airbnb without that much money by doing Airbnb arbitrage makes it that much more compelling. Now if you don't know what Airbnb arbitrage is, it's basically Basically, when you pay rent for a property and then rent it out to other people on platforms like Airbnb, Verbo, and HomeAway. Short-term rentals specifically have the highest income potential because you're capable of charging way higher daily rates. And yet at the expense of convenience, this allows people to just make that much more money. So speaking of short-term rentals, you're probably wondering how you can get into the market, which is where the platform Realpha comes in. I'm super excited to share them with you guys because they offer a really good alternative to get into the $1.2 trillion rental industry compared to traditional methods that require a ton of capital. Not everyone has $5,000 for Airbnb arbitrage startup costs, and even fewer people have the money for a property's down payment. Luckily, Realpha lets anyone invest in their Airbnb properties as easily as buying a stock. They're investing in tons of vacation rental properties, creating a strong portfolio and trailblazing a path for millions of people to access the trillion dollar market. This also isn't just any startup, as they just signed one of the industry's largest financing deals at $200 million and just secured another $40 million in property equity to acquire top potential vacation rentals in states like California, Florida, and Tennessee. So for a limited time only, they're giving my audience the chance to join as a shareholder in the company on the ground floor. And yeah, that kind of opportunity is typically only open to venture capitalists with a ton of money and connections. There are only a few days left for this offer. And again, this kind of opportunity doesn't come around often for retail investors. So don't miss your chance before they close their funding round on Thursday, December 8th. You can visit their website with the link below at invest.realpha.com slash charlie and get started investing in short-term rentals today. All right, so now that you're all caught up, let's talk about some of the reasons why we're seeing a decline in Airbnb bookings and profits overall. Interest rates right now are in the six to 7% range, which means new Airbnb hosts looking to get into the game will see their profits decrease by a ton for the first few years until they can actually refinance. Now that we're in a recession, we're seeing a lot less spending in the economy, which is actually very, very normal. This of course does create a lower ceiling for the amount of spending on travel. There's also high seasons and low seasons, depending on the location of your rental and the destinations around. For example, short-term rentals around ski and snowboarding resorts will go up during the winter and then fall off in the spring and summer. Rentals in the desert will go up and down depending on the weather in that area. For example, in Joshua Tree, bookings actually actually decrease a lot when it's super, super hot outside. Renters would just way rather stay when the weather is more mild. And of course, rentals and tourist destinations go up during holiday seasons and school breaks. In addition to the volatility of demand, travel plane tickets right now are getting really, really expensive, which could be lowering the amount of travel overall. Now, beyond these natural deviations, the only difference now is that because there's been a huge increase in competition, aka more Airbnbs being made, we're seeing a ton of people lose money because of the low season for most short-term stays. However, even with the increased competition and interest rates, you can still succeed if you want to get into Airbnb in 2023 and beyond. So now that we've talked about some of the issues and difficulties, let's move on to some of the strategies and tricks on how you can be successful at Airbnb despite this current recession. Tip number one is choose your Airbnb business model. And this is super, super important. There are tons of different strategies you can take to get to your goals, but here are the different ways that you can get into the industry based on price. First is a traditional Airbnb. This is very expensive and you have to buy the property. 
properties. Next is Airbnb arbitrage. This is less expensive, but you do have to have some capital to invest in and furnish the property that you actually rent. Then there's midterm and longer term leases and corporate housing. And after that, of course, we have Realpha, which is the least expensive. Now to get started with traditional Airbnbs, you need a ton of capital because you actually need to buy the property. However, you'd actually be able to take advantage of a ton of tax opportunities like cost segregation studies, which allow you to accelerate the depreciation on the home. I could talk about this for hours, but that would basically allow you to offset any passive income or even active income for certain people. Now, Airbnb arbitrage is less expensive because you don't have to own the property, but you still have to invest about five to $10,000 for things like lease costs, which would include things like your security deposit, furniture and decor, lens and cookware, listing photography and videography, cleaning services, and entity incorporation. So this is better for people that don't have a ton of cash for a down payment on a house. You also won't be on the hook for major property maintenance expenses because the actual property owner is responsible. You're basically just leasing from them. Now, of course, you can also do midterm, long-term, or corporate housing, but these won't be as profitable as short-term rentals that have high occupancy. Midterm is more ideal for busy people that want to go into the more sit it and forget it Airbnb model. You'll host fewer people per year, there's less turnover, but it's still very likely that you'll make more than you would with a long-term rental. Same thing with corporate housing, which of course has more turnover than long-term tenants, but that still allows most people to make more money. See, so yeah, it's very important that you choose the right short-term rental business model. Tip number two is to choose a strong market. First up, we have national parks, right? People are already familiar with national parks and most are already looking for Airbnbs to stay at near those parks. A couple examples closer to me are gonna be Joshua Tree and Yosemite. There's also vacation destinations, right? Like lake towns, beach towns, Disneyland, as well as near ski and snowboarding resorts. A lot of these places are places that people will still travel to regardless of economic condition, except for maybe of course Disneyland. Finding a good area with lots of demand, but not as much supply will really give you a good foundation for your short-term rental business. Tip number three is to find a real estate agent that really knows their short-term rentals. As a real estate broker myself, I know the importance of finding someone that's very specialized and knows what's going on in that area. And then you just really wanna focus on finding someone that's very specialized in Airbnbs or midterm or long-term or whatever you're looking for. If they understand your goal and the short-term real estate markets, they can definitely identify properties that will fit the bill. But of course, it's really good to have an agent that can help verify your numbers and make sure that you're profitable. Plus, if you're not local to that area, they're gonna know that area way, way better than you. Tip number four is to build a unique stay. Learning interior design and being able to create a beautiful place for others to stay is what will allow you to compete in this market. You basically want to create a blue ocean and build a unique stay that no one else has. I really recommend when you guys don't follow the cookie cutter path of you know finding a property that is pretty ordinary, furnishing with some boring furniture, and yeah, just making it like all the other Airbnbs on the market in that location. When you do that, you're becoming a commodity. You're basically just competing on price and it really makes it that much harder for you to get booked. A good example of a very, very cool Airbnb that is completely different than others is my friend Ryan's place in Yucca Valley. We actually stayed here. It was one of the best Airbnbs I've ever stayed at. And it really was because it's such a unique stay. There were no properties around it. We were on top of a hill, there are floor ceiling windows with an amazing view of the city and mountains. And yeah, just completely different than all the other Airbnbs uh, around that area. And yeah, that's why we booked it. Another great way to build a unique stay is through glamping Airbnbs. And the best thing is that this is actually much more affordable than buying a real property. The start cost for a tent or a dome, along with outdoor living necessities like an electricity generator, seating, all that stuff, is much, much less than setting up an actual home. You can either buy land or lease it from the owner and negotiate a percent of your profits to to them and the owner can actually even help you manage the Airbnb. I mean, they're living on site, so it's perfect and they can sort of help you refill the water, any firewood, help clean and anything else like that. Really the takeaway is that you can get really, really creative with your Airbnbs and the more unique it is, the less you are competing on price. Tip number five is to save the profits and build a reserve. So it's really good to be conservative and have reserves for maintenance and other costs like property tax. Now, depending on where you're actually buying your short-term rental, a lot of the times, most of your money will be made in high season months. So what you really need to do is save the money and either reinvest or save it for the low seasons. This is my good friend Shelby Church and she recently made a video about how she lost money with her Airbnb. Now if your Airbnb runs into the same problems as her, you don't want to be in trouble because you spent all the profit only to owe it all back in taxes and maintenance costs. Luckily she's super smart, she saved the profits as well as knowing the fact that it should do well in the long term. Even though it's called short-term rentals, you know, it really still is a long-term game. So yeah, takeaway is don't expect consistent cash flow for the entire year. Some seasons are going to do a lot better than others. And it's really critical that you stack your cash during those months. Now let's talk about the good news. At the end of the day, even if the money coming in does not cover your mortgage, it's not always a total loss for yourself. Your total ROI can still be good if you own the 
property, even if the listing isn't making as much. Your renters are paying down your principal on the property, so you are building equity. Your house will most likely go up in value over time, allowing you to build more equity through appreciation. There's also tons of tax deductions and write-offs, for example, cost aggregation studies. And yeah, calculating the true ROI of a property is a lot more complex than a lot of people think. So is Airbnb still worth getting into? The answer for me at least is yes. Is it getting harder because of an increase in competition? Yes. I haven't got the chance to interview Ryan, the owner of over 10 Airbnbs in the desert of Palm Springs, who said it's getting harder because there are so many cookie cutter homes springing up on the platform. He really recommended that you buy a plot of land that's not surrounded by other people, not one that's in a neighborhood surrounded by neighbors, and build a very, very unique stay around that. Overall, I think Airbnb is still good to do, especially if you can be counted as a real estate professional with the IRS and take advantage of all the tax opportunities. Arbitrage is a great way to get started without needing a ton of cash. Midterm, corporate, and even long-term rentals are still a great way to get into the game. And yeah, real estate is overall a great way to build wealth regardless of interest rates or housing prices because it will always go up in the long run. Plus, if you're buying, you'll always be able to refinance in the future if you need access to that cash right away. I'd say that my biggest takeaway for this video, as always, is to just take action. All businesses have risk and chances are you will have some failures. But if you're constantly taking action and you you never give up, you will succeed. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe for more content just like this. I make a ton of videos about personal finance, investing, and entrepreneurship. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.